Okay. So key concepts in infant and toddler development. Um, this is a tricky age uh, to memorize all of these changes that are going on. So I kind of put some <laughs> hints on here and some key time frames and things that you want to remember. Um, we talked about physical weight gain half a pound per week. So that averages out to about one ounce per day that we expect the newborn up to three months of age to gain. And um, what we expect the newborn to be able to do is hold their head up and pick it up off of the exam table and turn it and be able to kind of look both ways at um, you when you're assessing them or at caregivers and just hold their head up just for a few seconds in the newborn period. Uh, they also are able to support themselves on their tummy, especially as they get closer to that three month age and they start to um, have better hand eye coordination as well. So intellectually at first they communicate just by crying. Okay, and they try to do, they try to determine um, when they're hungry if somebody's going to come and feed them, or if if they're wet if somebody will come and change them, and that's really that very first trust versus mistrust time period that we talk about um, with our Erickson's developmental uh, stages, and then after that they realize that they can get interaction from people. Um, and attention by doing more than just crying. So then they start to slowly uh, coo and babble and then they begin to say words as they get closer towards their um, first birthday. So I want to talk specifically about certain ages. So two to three months, and if you look at the picture here, this is kind of a classic um, photo of a two month old and this baby is holding their head up when um, sitting up and so basically they don't have that floppy neck where we need to support their head when we pick them up and they're able to lift their head and their chest when they're on their tummy and I wanted to point out that um, you know now we recommend that all babies and infants sleep on their back we had the whole back to sleep movement um, Oh, over a decade ago uh, to reduce the number of SIDS deaths and they found that there have been less sudden infant death syndrome cases when children sleep on their back. So what happened is once we started putting everybody to sleep on their back, they started having some delays with their head and neck and chest um, muscle development. So they're um, became a, an initiative called Tummy Time to where we as providers need to teach our patients to have the, or the parents to have the baby lay supervised on their tummy for you know, 10, 15 minutes a couple times a day and lay there right with them and a, a, you know, definitely observe them and watch them the whole time, but just try to interact with them and stimulate them to lift up their head, push their, um, chest up a little bit and a lot of times if you put brightly colored toys and things in front of them uh, they'll they'll be um, intrigued enough to kind of pick their head up so this is the age you want to encourage tummy time um, this is also the age where they start at two to three months they start laughing a little bit and squealing and making some um, recognizable sounds and uh, this is always very pleasing to the parents. So this is, this is kind of a nice time when the baby becomes more interactive. So I want you to remember two months tummy time and two months um, that head control. Hold, hold their head when, when they're sitting up. Now they can't sit without assistance, but when they're in that upright position, they can hold their head just for a little bit. By four months, and this is a, a cute little four month old, and at this age, they are very engaging and interested in their surroundings. And by four months, they should have doubled their birth weight. They are very smiling and playful. And this is the age where I remember and, and encourage students to think of four months and flip from front to back. So that's just kind of a little 
mnemonic device, I guess, that by four months they should be able to flip over. And we know that it's easier to, to roll first from our tummy over to our back. And if you just think about uh, what takes more effort for you to do, then you'll see that it's a lot easier for the baby on their tummies to flip over onto their back. So they should roll about this time. And they should also, when they're laying on their stomach, start kind of pivoting around and moving around, not crawling, but just starting to kind of scoot a little bit. Um, and this is also the age at four to five months where they start salivating and their um, salivary glands become really active because they're going to start cutting their first tooth about six months of age. So right about that four month mark, they start drooling and they start putting everything in their mouth and starting, you know, this is kind of the age where we think that they're quote unquote teething, but really they're just getting ready to start cutting their teeth. Now by six months, they start to cut their first tooth. They roll back to front. And um, so laying supine, they're able to flip over and they also will transfer things from one hand to their other. And six months is a great age because they are able to feed themselves as far as with their bottle. So at this age, they'll start grabbing for breast if they're breast fed. They'll start, you can put a bottle in their hands and they'll kind of lift it up, hold it a little bit. And this is also the age when they start having a lot of stranger anxiety. So six months is kind of a monumental time when um, they, you know, before six months of age, you can interact with them. You can lay them on the exam table and do their assessments. And usually they're okay. But after that six month period, you'll notice that they will really start to kind of look at mom or dad and start clutching for mom or dad. And you'll want to do their assessments, maybe in mom and dad's lap. Um, after six months of age, at nine months, they start to um, have much better muscle control where they can pull themselves up. This is that uh, cruising time period where they'll hold on to couches and coffee tables and start walking around, or not walking, start cruising around a little bit um, and really start kind of learning to get their balance. Uh, they also start to have a better fine motor skills and they develop that little pincer grasp. And with that pincer grasp, they can start to uh, feed themselves like Cheerios and some little finger foods. Um, and this is a fun time because parents can put them in a high chair, put a few little um, different types of you know baby friendly finger foods and just let the let the baby kind of start to explore um and and develop some fine motor skills and also eat at the same time so um this is the time also where they start to kind of put those two sent two sounds together and they'll start to babble a little bit with dad dad mama and so nine months is just a really fun time um, for families and they're also very interested in what others are doing in fact they about nine months of age will start following their parents gaze so if their mom or dad are looking at something um, you will see the infant turn their head and look at and follow the gaze to what whatever mom and dad are looking at so they get increasingly interactive and engaged in their environment uh, this is also the age at nine months where you want to start teaching families about um, choking hazards because they do start finger feeding. At this age, everything goes into their mouth and they can pick up little tiny things off of the carpet or the floor. So nine months teaching, um, uh, it's always recommended, you know, to talk about different types of choking hazards in the home and educate the parents on getting down onto the baby's level um, when they're able to start getting more mobile. And by nine months, usually they're all crawling. And so you wanna get down and see what type of predicaments they can get in and look for any type of, of safety hazards and choking hazards. And you're also gonna to wanna to start thinking have the parents think about weaning off of the bottle at uh, at one year of age. So at nine months, 
we need to start uh, introducing a sippy cup because weaning from the bottle, and uh, if, if any of you all have children or have had young children at some point, know that that is never an easy task. Babies are really uh, used to drinking out of that bottle. It's soothing to them. And so when we try to introduce a sippy cup, which are much harder um, as far as the, the nipple on them goes, that really starts um, some power struggles there. So introduce the cup at nine months of age. And then by 12 months, we should wean from the bottle. And 12, that 12 month period, it, there's all kinds of milestones that, that happen at that first birthday. Um, they should begin to walk. And sometimes, you know, some children will be independently walking by 12 months of age. Some will be walking with holding a caregiver's hand, but certainly they should be able to bear weight, balance, and, and either be walking or uh, really starting to walk at that time. Um, they're also able to throw objects and think that it's fun and funny to th throw everything across the room and off of their high chairs and out of their strollers. Um, and by this time, they're really adept at finger feeding themselves. So they're able to um, eat a variety of foods. Um, you know, if you spread those out on a, on a little tray, they can finger feed themselves and, and really start using their sippy cup on more of a um, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and like two snack type um, drinking schedule, like, like more like an adult type drinking schedule. Uh, one of the hardest battles at this 12 month period is trying to teach uh, families that when we wean from a bottle that uh, contained iron fortified formula, we can't replace that with cow's milk. Um, and what I mean by that is we don't want to start putting cow's milk into the bottle uh, because cow's milk, although it has lots of um, you know, vitamin D and it has calcium and it has essential fat that they have to have for brain development, we have to remember and teach families that there's no iron whatsoever in cow's milk. And in fact, um, the, the milk itself will, um, it actually blocks and decreases absorption of iron. So, um, so what happens is this is the age where we start to get iron deficiency anemia starting because families will transition the, the child from formula that is very, uh, heavy, you know, it has every bit of iron needed for growth and development to the cow's mouth that has zero iron. And what happens is we see kids that drink a half a gallon of milk a day that are, you know, 12, 15, 18 months of age because the parents don't understand um, that milk is not necessarily a good thing when it's in excess uh, at that age. And then we check their iron and they will be anemic. And um, we also check lead levels at this age. And that is because during the 12 month to two year, 12 to 24 months, that is a key, um, the leading time for lead uh, poisoning. And you all read many, or many of you read the article I had on lead poisoning and you guys had some great comments and questions about uh, lead poisoning. Um, and, and you read also that there's a relationship between iron deficiency anemia making you more at risk for lead poisoning. Uh, but children, because everything at, that they're at this age still goes into their mouth, that's how they learn and explore uh, their environment. And the fact that they're mobile, they are able to pick things up off of the ground, um, put things, everything in their mouth that may have uh, lead component to them and you know anytime a house was built before 1974 there's a much higher risk um, for iron I'm sorry for lead to be in the paint chips in that house so um, we used to use paint that had lead in that uh, and then after 1974 that that type of paint was um, 
was no longer utilized, it was banned because we found that it had a significant amount of lead in it. And um, those of you all that read the lead article know that a lot of um, toys and beads and uh, pottery and things that come from other countries still are painted with lead-based paint. And so we need to um, really make sure that parents are educated about that and uh, certainly draw a, a hemoglobin hematocrit and an iron level at 12 months of age. And the American Academy of Pediatrics and um, Medicaid require that at 12 months well child check. And again, the, by 12 months, the birth weight should have tripled. So you just want to kind of picture that first birthday and think of the baby that's either walking or starting to toddle and starting to say uh, a couple words. They should be able to say a few words by 12 months of age other than mama and dada. Okay, so toddlers, I just kind of have these, that whole one to two age frame together and what happens during the toddler the toddler stage is that basically that um that growth that has been stretching out over their first year of life begins to really strengthen they become heavier as toddlers um, they become more muscular and they really learn how to master the whole walking um, concept and and then start to gradually run and climb and their fine motor skills become much more adept at taking blocks and stacking them first they'll stack two blocks at a time then they'll be able to build on that they're able to turn knobs and get into all kinds of things that we may not want them in um, and usually by one to two years of age they can uh, use a spoon and a cup, and uh, it's not always pretty when they start using a spoon, but we need to have um, parents allow them to practice with a spoon, even though it's messy, and practice with their cups and, um, and let them kind of master those, those skills that are normal for toddler development. So because they can climb and run and turn knobs, safety, is a critical uh, component of the toddler age period and the well child exams that we do during that time. And typically you'll see a child during this time for their 15 month, their 18 month, and a 24 month well child exam. Those are the required um, early periodic screening uh, times. So EPSDT screens, which are the Medicaid required uh, well child exam schedule. We'll see them um, several times during that year. So 15, 18, and 24 months. And then after that time period, it just goes to a once a year uh, physical. So we still have some um, good opportunity during that uh, for one to two year of age to teach parents about safety, about anticipatory mm -hmm. guidance and brain development. Um, I put on here the uh, three, the age three, and like I talked about earlier, by three years of age, um, so after that toddler phase, they should be potty trained. They could speak in full sentences. And three is also the age they need to go to the dentist. And they need to have, uh, we need to start screening blood pressures at every visit. So there's a lot of uh, key components to the um, three-year-old well child exam that I just wanted to kind of put there at the end so that we can remember that. And then after that, it's really more school preparedness and, and um, kind of getting ready for kindergarten when we're in that age four and five. But I wanted to point out that toddlers, during this toddler time period, um, they are uh, you know, they sometimes act like adolescents and they, they act before they think. And so they have the physical capabilities to run out into the road and to ride, um, you know, little riding toys down steps, but they don't have the cognitive ability to anticipate that that's going to uh, be dangerous. And so this is the number one age for accidental poisonings, accidental, um, 
uh, trauma. And so key, key time for safety education for toddlers. Um, this is a big time for burns where they try to grab things off the stove tops, um, drownings. So toddlers, the toddlerhood is a very fun age, but it's also um, really kind of a scary age uh, for, for families because we just, they cannot be supervised enough. And as you see on the slide, they're in constant motion. And the other thing that goes on cognitively during this time period is that the toddlers really start to develop a sense of um, autonomy and that they're a different being than their mother. It takes them about a year till they realize that they're their own person and um, then they start to kind of exhibit that autonomy and that's why their favorite word is no and they just like to explore and see what all they can get into and what kind of mischief they can get into and so this is also an age where we want to talk about um, about healthy ways to discipline and to take take time outs um, one of the main problems that uh, families have during the end of the toddlerhood, so twos and then into the, the um, kind of that preschool age, two and three is, is just behavior and um, temper tantrums and things. So as providers, you're going to want to be able to answer those questions and give guidance on how do we help families um, control temper tantrums and behaviors and things. So that is 